Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Now the summer season is upon us, so I knew I had to do one of these videos. If you've been here before, you know exactly what's about to happen, but if you haven't, my name's Amanda. I am an absolute stats nerd. I love a little bit of analytics, especially when it comes to fashion. I also love diving into my favorite publications. So today we are going to be breaking down the summer trends for 2023 lists by the following publications. Glamour, Vogue, Vogue Editors, Refine Henry 29, Who What Wear, the Who What Wear editors, and L Canada. What I do is I take these lists and I put them in this little form that I make, and then I start to cross section what I see people are saying the same, and what are the complete outliers from every other list. Now, I've gotta tell you, you guys, there are a lot of colors on this second list. I know I'm showing it to you right now because it was so hard to cross section this list. And I think the reason is that when editors are looking at trends, they are especially looking at the runways, but then you also have the opinion of what is going to be wearable on the everyday. So I definitely tried to do a bit of mixing of both the inspiration and then the actual styling day today. So let's dive on in to the very first trend. This one is a broad strokes, okay? We are talking romantic adornments. Now I'm currently planning all of the outfits for my bachelorette. I'm so so excited and this is one that I definitely want to integrate in some way and you have most certainly been seeing on social media and that is romantic rosettes. I think that the most feminine thing you can do to add to a wardrobe is sheer flowing fabrics, a little bit of floral, and romantic rosettes and 3D florals have not only been mentioned by Glamour, but also Who What Wear, and you've also been seeing them even just in the form of a print. I know florals for spring and summer are groundbreaking, but that is something that is going to be continuing. We're just seeing those bigger, bolder patterns, and when it comes to romantic adornments, the other one that I love, and I think that you'll see and a few of my bridal looks as well is bows. Bows are absolutely huge and they're not going anywhere. In fact, we're gonna be seeing them everywhere. Sheer everything is also something that was super trending last year, has been a huge trend throughout all seasons for 2023. If you've seen my full year in review, I will link that up above, but sheer everything is going to be here to stay. And when we talk about sheer, we're not just talking about that fully see-through fabric that's kind of uniform. We're also talking about lace. I'm sure on social media, you have been starting to see those full lace dresses. They're not in particularly always a mini either. We've been seeing that maxi, that full column dressing is still a big part of the trends, but this time a little bit more revealing. Vogue was also continuing to talk about saying yes to the goddess and Elle Canada also did a nod to that dream state, the lace, the see-through, but something that is here to stay from last year is the bra tops. Bra tops continue to be a huge trend for this year, whether that be underneath some lace, underneath a blazer, or just on their own. The last thing I will do a quick mention of when it comes to romantic adornments is just the flow of fabric. Maybe it's not a rose, maybe it's not a bow, but it is just a full fringe. Full fringe is something that, again, is coming back full force. We will be talking about boho in a moment's time, but fringe as a photographer is literally my dream. Anything that creates movement is going to catch eyes and also just make you feel so good in what you're wearing. So we just spoke about catching eyes. This is almost catching eyes, but being like, oh yeah, I didn't mean to do that. And that is quiet luxury. You may have started to hear about quiet luxury on TikTok and that old money aesthetic baby. If I could choose any aesthetic out there, it would be this one. And that is because there are so many beautiful, crisp tailoring pieces and those classic pieces we talk about a wardrobe and we'll also talk about a couple of those Instagram girlies that do this so, so well. So going down Easy Elegance, Who at Wear was talking about that in Editor's Choice, as well as Quiet Luxury, and those are both things that you can certainly wear on an everyday basis. The Vogue editors as well were talking about that classic white poplin shirt that I truly believe you should have in your wardrobe no matter what. And Bermuda shorts as well are this part of Quiet Luxury and Old Money Aesthetic that is coming back that I can confidently say we're not the big thing last year. Finally, we have a trend that is coming into this year that I feel like could stand the test of time, but we haven't seen for some time. And when we're talking about trends, we are talking about things that you're gonna start seeing more on the high street. And that's why knowing trends is really important because you can spot, do I actually like that? Or is it just because I've been seeing it everywhere? Another part of quiet luxury could be a maxi skirt. Very old money aesthetic. And if you have seen Sophia Ritchie's Instagram or 
for her wedding. It absolutely blew up for good reason. So stunning, so timeless, so classic. You'll know that her aesthetic is now taking over like wildfire. Who What Wear talked about the preppy button up as well as 90s minimalism, which was a huge thing last year and continues to be. But I actually feel like it's the 2010s and the 80s that this year is really going to be hinging on. And that is because we're talking about those tennis cords, things that are really preppy, those things you could imagine wearing to a private school and also who would wear giving a big nod to that 80s jewelry. If you want to add a really amazing staple to your summer wardrobe, start looking for a good pair of white trousers. Not only is this just going to make you feel so good and so summery, but it also is a huge part of that quiet luxury feel. We're going to talk about necklines and hemlines a little bit more later, but my first combo of necklines is going to be the halter top done in a crisp monochromatic look with a white trouser and a nice little ballet flat. Nothing screams old money to me more than this. Also, this is one of those things that ties in to mermaid core, which again will be a big conversation later. If you're thinking, okay, Amanda, this is gonna be like, I need to burn down my wardrobe and create a whole new wardrobe for what you're talking about. Well, no, no, don't worry about it. Let's just accessorize a couple of things that I know you're going to love year over year and really add to your wardrobe. And that is raffia accessories and a little raffia moment. And right now I'm wearing one of my favorite raffia belts that I bought last year, I believe. It honestly doesn't feel like it though because I've worn it so much. So let's talk about how you can integrate that into your wardrobe and who's talking about it. Who What Wear literally said raffia everything in bags, raffia touches by the Vogue editors. And whenever you see editors, that is kind of more of an indication that it's very wearable fashion. Raffia is such a breathable fabric, which makes it super great for footwear, especially when it's integrated with leather soles versus like a plastic sole, for example and bags as well, taking those typical bags that you can see. This is a good way to almost, you know, dip your toe into luxury without the absolute full luxury price tag. But you do have to weigh the idea that, oh my gosh, I'm paying for raffia at what price point? There are so many ways that you can upgrade a raffia look by just getting a cutie little bag on Amazon. So let's get to those hemlines. We already talked a little bit neckline and this time for summer, we are talking an A-line or an angled hemline. Specifically, angled headlines are going to be the bigger conversation. And we're talking about that in skirts and in dresses, of course. These different angles add a really amazing interest. And when you are walking and moving, it just adds this really kind of cool look to the way that your fabric moves and flows. They really do give that interest of summer without being too overdone, which I love and which the Vogue editor said as well. The second hemline that you might notice a little bit more, this one is a little bit of it, but you can't really see. And it is the fit and flare mini dress. If you are someone who is like, I need to add some youth to my wardrobe. It is just getting old and stuffy. Then maybe an A-line little mini is for you. There is definitely a youthful vibe to an A-line and this specifically, guys, this is another nod to the 2010s, okay? I'm calling it right here because the 2010s as well, or was it more 2000s? Let me know in the comments down below what you think, but ballet flats, we've been talking about them since the beginning of this year. It's gonna be a huge trend, not only through the summer and spring, but also through the fall and winter. Ballet flats are like the one. And when we're talking about that old money aesthetic, we're talking about those tweed Chanel ballet flats, which I've got Vestier <laughs> notifications up the wazoo for those, but you can get some amazing flats that are just so beautiful. I know Miu Miu has been coming out with some and so many on the high street have been really investing a little bit more attention into their flatware and specifically either the satin flatware or the mesh flatware when it comes to ballet flats. Colorful ballerinas as well are a really fun way to add a little bit of pop to your wardrobe, but without being as ostentatious as maybe those huge platform Valentinos that we were seeing last summer. You can also get some really amazing leather ballet flats that are so incredibly comfortable and girl, I need to find some. That is what I'm gonna be doing after I edit this video. So check the description box because I am going to put a few tags there and on my like to know it, I just posted a bunch of raffia pieces. Um, so if you wanna shop what I'm shopping as well, just check out the description box. On to number six, I mentioned this in the 2023 as a whole. This is sticking around for the summer and the editors are continuing to say this and that is cargo pants. I also have a nod to denim because I didn't know where 
where else to put it, but cargo pants and utility pockets, you will definitely be seeing that a lot. Can I also mention that we might even be seeing more pockets in skirts and dresses as well. It doesn't just stick to shorts and pants. Finally, my small mention of denim because no one was talking about denim, not really anyways. Vogue mentioned it a couple of times, but specifically the mood in indigo denim. And I think that's just because of mermaid core, but specifically for me, I'm sorry, but this kind of colored denim is just not it for me. I love a white denim and I love a really dark denim and I feel like that's where I am right now. Number seven, we are talking about the vibes and that is boho and mermaid core. I love to see it because Chloe is one of my absolute favorite designers. If you've been here for some time, you'll know that is where I have invested the most of my money that I've put into luxury pieces has been Chloe. How you integrate this into your wardrobe, it is really those tie dye dip fabrics, the crochet knit, the cobweb weaves, which I've definitely already seen on H&M as well. So beautiful and really an elegant way to kind of add a cover up to whatever you are wearing beneath. Started to see some of those ombre looks as well in some of the stores that we've got in the mall. And Hot Tropic is the title that Elle Canada gave this. And I think that it's actually a good one because not only do you have some of those cobweb weaves, but you also have the colors that you would specifically see in Mermaid Core, like the greens and the blues. But down to glamor, we are talking about Mermaid Core and ways to integrate it through sparkle and shimmer. And I feel like glamor just did it the best. You can see in this middle image here, we also have a rosette, which adds to the romantic rosettes trend. And even those little pieces that you've seeing come off of dresses it kind of gives me a seaweed vibe but I just find it really really cool and interesting and it's something that I haven't seen in the past five years it's really started to trickle in just in this past fall season to now let's also mention that the Little Mermaid did just have their premiere of the new movie you went to the above world a man was drowning I had to save him and even on the little fashion runway where like influencers and famous people go, I saw so many amazing outfits that were sequin and tie dye and flowy and see-through and I think mermaid core, if done right, can be so beautiful and so breathtaking. Something that kind of comes out of the boho vibes as well as mermaid core is some more one pieces. And I'm here for it. Growing up, I would always go for the two piece. And now that I'm seeing more one pieces and this is really a trend and people are investing a little bit more in those patterns and cuts, you're gonna be seeing a lot more one pieces and specifically embracing the print. I, I get a lot of the emails from like Netaporte and My Teresa and Far fetch just because I want to see what they're saying and what they're kind of pushing it's always so interesting and when I saw this Loewe top you can spot it right away it's the one on the very right I was so confused and that's exactly what they wanted me to be was confused because we are talking about trick of the eye we're talking about those patterns that just kind of confuse your eye as someone walks by as well as these pixelated themes that Loewe has really been doing really well and I'm going to really try here trompe l'eau trompe l'eau um, basically meaning trick of the eye and this is something that painters have been doing for absolute ages to trick the person who is looking at their artwork. Since we came out of the panty and we were wearing all of our monochromatic sweatsuits, designers decided, you know what, enough. They went wild and it is continuing. And that is why this next one is called Extra Extra. However, specifically in 2023, there is a way that designers are taking Extra Extra and that is the surface value according to Vogue. It's the ruffles, it's the pleats, it's the sequins, and it is also the way that the hips are portrayed specifically. Vogue also called this shooting from the hip. And this is something that I've been seeing crop up in even places that are outside of the runway. And I'm kind of impressed when I see women go out to events and they're very dressed up. There is now this very geometric architectural look to some of these dresses specifically coming out of the hip. And I love it. Let's embrace that female form. More on the extra extra, we're talking fight club. We're talking a little bit of melee going into some of these vibes. And even in the second image here, you can see, again, those hips have absolutely been exaggerated. It's Gabriella Hurst and Loewe that have been doing this so, so well when it comes to actual metal pieces on their outfits. And this feature in Elle Canada, I mean, 
Wow. You know that I love to kind of wrap in these videos when we're talking about color as well as accessories and specifically color L Canada's talking about blues. That was a big thing at the beginning of this year. Originally, I thought that this was going to carry out more throughout this year. Um, we were talking about cobalt blue, but it really seems to me that it's more this powdery blue throughout the summer. Maybe cobalt will come back in the fall and winter, but we'll have a whole new round of runways to kind of look at by then. Lavender haze. According to Glamour and of course Taylor Swift, I feel like Victoria Beckham has done this so well in this middle image with those beautiful trailing pieces of fabric, a little bit of sheer, a little bit of A-line, a little bit of lavender, and very, very feminine. Wrapping in a lot of the trends that we've already talked about in this video. Who What Wear is talking about red, and I feel like Who What Wear kind of has their pulse on what is very wearable fashion, and red for the summer is perfect for a European summer, which I think a lot of us are constantly dreaming of. I do love the way that Vogue kind of mentions sunset hues. If you can create an outfit that incorporates the colors that you normally see in nature, it's just gonna pull itself together in a way that is so pleasing to the eye and you won't even realize it, but it's because you see it all the time in the natural world and sunset hues are my absolute favorite, so I am a big thumbs up for this one. Elle Canada is also talking about the bright side. Last year we were all about those citrus colors, and this summer it's leaning more towards the citrus, yes, but more towards the greens and blues. If we are gonna talk about the metallic hues, it is all about silver. A very youthful look, something that really livens up an outfit, and silver has been seen on so many runways for summer 20 2023 and specifically as well in accessories. I wanted to give this one its own section and that is summer black. That's right. If you are a girly who's saying, no, thank you, ma'am. I do not want blue. I do not want lime green. And there is something so chic about a beautiful pair of city sandals, a black linen maxi dress, and just your hair pulled back in a claw clip and a basket bag. I love that. It's brands like Tory Burch and Valentino that really embrace this on their runways. And I'm gonna tag down below one of my favorite black linen dresses that I currently have in my wardrobe and is from Dish, one of my favorite brands. So last summer, I already kind of mentioned it, the Valentino platform shoes. We are taking it down to street level, baby. We are going back to the summer in the city sandal. And that is according to Vogue. They are specifically talking about that fisherman sandal, which is so cute with like a backless loafer or those kind of thicker strap sandals. These are gonna make you go the extra mile and just feel super cute in those maxi dresses and those maxi skirts. Fresh textures as well. We've already mentioned raffia. You can incorporate that into your shoes so easily. But if you did wanna add a little bit of height, this is one way to do so. And another Instagram girly that I'm absolutely obsessed with, with neutral old money style, and that is Claire Rose. Showing off the wedges here, we're not just talking about that thick cork anymore. No, there's a little bit more architectural design to the wedges that you're going to start to see coming out. Even a skinny wedge, which I'm very much interested in. And who doesn't love an athletic sneaker? And when we're talking about accessories, it's puffed accessories. I'm just gonna leave that one with you. I wonder how we would integrate that into our everyday, but puff slides as well have been a big one. There are a few on Amazon that I've seen trending so much and that kind of trend most certainly filters down from the runway as well. They do look pretty cool though, I'm into it. It's like an elevated croc. Metallic bags, we have already talked about metallics, but you can certainly bring in whatever metallic you love the most. That is the whole point, seeing these trends and saying, Okay, how would I do that my way? Or what do I already have in my wardrobe? And finally, we already mentioned this a little bit in the 80s earrings in old money aesthetic, but that is larger than life earrings. I can get behind that, a very neutral wardrobe, a very neutral outfit with some big earrings and you are ready to go. For someone who has fine hair as well, that's always one of my biggest tips. If you have fine hair and you're having a bad hair day, just pull it back, put it in a tight little bun and throw on some really big earrings and babe, you're gonna rock it. Maybe add a cutie little lip too. So there you have it. Here are all the articles that I used for this and I will also tag them in the description box below. Ultimately, I hope that this video inspired you to shop your own wardrobe. I know I wanna go and like plug and play right now with what I've got in there based on what I've learned from these trends, but it's always nice to have a little bit of inspiration. Fashion is art in motion, as I always say, and it's always good to have fun with it, but style whatever you love the way that you love it. And don't feel the need to buy into trends if you really 
really don't feel like they're gonna stand the test of time. It's always just fun to have a little style education. Thank you guys so much for watching and please do subscribe if you like this video. I put a lot of effort into it and I love making them for you. And without further ado, I'll see you in my next one. Bye guys.